as befits our name, are you ready to be afraid? I mean, really afraid? Okay, here we go. Uh, article in The Atlantic uh, this month on uh, the post-antibiotic apocalypse and the threat and what we're trying to do about it. Now, uh, there's an economist named Jim O'Neill who has been studying uh, the threat posed by um, antibiotic-resistant infections, uh, drug-resistant infections, which are becoming more common with every passing year. We are referring to bacteria and other microbes that can't be touched by antibiotics. This is a huge problem, It's a, and it's one that could become, to use that word, apocalyptic, by which we mean that uh, the economist, Jim O'Neill, uh, believes that uh, a million people have died already from these types of infections, and that by 2050, which is, after all, just 34 years from now, he thinks that 10 million people could be dying every year from antibiotic-resistant infections. Now, that's a big deal. Uh, He was asked by the British government to look at this problem. Now, just to be clear, he is a former chairman of Goldman Sachs. He has no scientific training, but he is a good calculator of uh, these threats, and I believe him in terms of the risk assessment. We'll get a little bit into the solution in a second, but first let's talk about the risk because I strongly believe that the risk is real. He's used a lot of uh, microbiologists to work with him on that report. It says that if antibiotics continue to lose their effectiveness, these infections will rob the economy of uh, $100 trillion. I feel like Dr. Evil when I throw around a number like that, $100 trillion between now and 2050. That's equivalent to $10,000 for everybody who's alive on the earth today. 10 million people will die each year, roughly one every three seconds, more than currently die from cancer. Now, this in- these are, if anything, conservative numbers because they don't include people who in- survive surgeries only because of antibiotics and so on. But then he has some ideas. Let's talk about those ideas and where they stand up or where they do not. Improve sanitation. Well, no question there. We need to prevent more infections before they happen rather than curing them with expensive and damaging drugs afterwards. So that, fine. Uh, he also talks about a global tracking system for antibiotics to see which are being used, where resi- where drug-resistant microbes are, are popping up, the genes inside them, and so on. Again, makes a lot of sense. Also, reduce the unnecessary use of antibiotics in agriculture. Also a good idea because a lot of Farm animals are being shot up with antibiotics they don't need, and uh, a lot of uh, human antibiotics are wasteful too, so he suggests developing better, faster, cheaper diagnostic tools. That makes sense. All of it makes sense. Here's the part that uh, is missing. He also talks about public awareness, alternatives like vaccines and so on. All good, and I support all of that. Here's where, and I'm not going to say it's because of Goldman Sachs or anything else, but here's the part he leaves out. The other thing we need to do, and there's a lot of medical research behind this. I'm not going to be like Bill Maher or or anyone else, a commentator venturing into medical science. This is medical science. Doctors and research agree that we prescribe antibiotics far too often when they are not needed. We prescribe them for infections that will not respond to antibiotics. Doctors prescribe them over the phone when they haven't looked at the patient. The doctors prescribe them just to keep their patients happy. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry markets antibiotics and encourages doctors to sell them. We need to cut back significantly on the use of antibiotics where those antibiotics are not absolutely necessary because when we do that, we develop more immunity to these antibiotics, and that, or rather our our microbes do, and that in return uh, exacerbates this problem even more. So the other thing we need to do to prevent this apocalypse of drug-resistant infections is to stop using antibiotics where they are not needed, and that means stopping the drug companies from dictating our economic and medical behavior. This is a tragedy waiting to happen, but it's one we can stop.